Welcome back to States and Kingdoms. Today we're talking about Pink Floyd and their album from 1987, Momentary Lapse of Reason. Maybe the most polarizing Pink Floyd album to talk about. But we do not duck controversy here. That's funny, polarizing, because on Division Bell there's that song, Poles Apart. That album is literally polarizing. Roger Waters leaving Pink Floyd uh, and, and the subsequent albums and everything, is, it's a really interesting story. It's sometimes a little disappointing. You know, it's not something that I really focus on. I, it doesn't affect my enjoyment you're, of, of oh, anything. I was going to say, it doesn't affect your day-to-day -day life. Like, you're not depressed. No, it doesn't. Because of what happened but to Pink Floyd. But it is. It's a, a, lot of, a lot of interesting things. And we're not talking about any of them here. Well, you know, I've always been a Dave Gilmore fan. I yeah. gotta admit, I'm a Dave Gilmore fan. I'm a Rick Wright fan. Yes. Um, you know, we we listened to a good amount of Pink Floyd um, as kids. Um, yeah, there was the summer of Pink Floyd. Where the summer of Pink Floyd. Really, that was like your last year in high, was that like your last year in high school or, or mm -hmm. you know so it was kind of like just you were you know still in the house. Lots of changes, Max. And we just had on all the Pink Floyd albums. Uh, and uh, interestingly to me, uh, this is the first Pink Floyd album that I heard. I, I would imagine, because something about this, I don't, I don't have any real memories of listening to it, but these songs always sound yeah. very familiar. I think I heard this probably when I was like three. I think this was an album that was on when we were, yeah, very, very young. Because so, yeah. um, cause that's when it came out. And that means that this review will be highly subjective. <laughs> I mean highly subjective. Yeah. The next Pink Floyd album that I got, the next Pink Floyd album I heard, and the first one that I ever bought myself was Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Right, because you're a very interesting fellow. No, I just, you know, I was playing guitar uh, by that time and reading guitar magazines. I read guitar magazines. Mm. And that album, a lot of, there are a lot of musicians around that time that w talked about that album. I remembered reading, yeah, it, it was kind Mogwai. of a cliche. Yeah, right. No, really, I really remember. It, I think it was a guy from Mogwai said that, he didn't really care for most Pink Floyd. He just liked the well, Sid Barrett Well, I remembered um, Corey Taylor, 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 Taylor from Danny Warhol's saying that. Yeah. That he, that was he. Did, he you know he was into Pink Floyd, but really only the first album. But yeah. yeah it, that was for me. Yeah, it, was yeah, it, it became that, like uh, it was like a cliche that we kept coming across, just reading about musicians and music. Like that was the popular thing to say that like you yeah. only listen to the first album. But I really loved that first album. Yeah. I mean that's and that's It's got it's got some real magic to it. It's it's very special. That's the thing about I, I just to say that I'm a I'm a big admirer of Sid Barrett. Yeah. Uh, uh, he was absolutely brilliant and um, so that's what like before we listen to I mean I'd heard Dark Side of the Moon. I, I if you're How can a, you not? I mean I yeah, we'd already done the Wizard of Oz thing even. Oh yeah. So I mean like <laughs> I had heard Dark Side of the Moon, uh, but Really, when we saw the Pink Floyd, I was I was basically coming to it from, you know, when we we actually listened in chronological order. So, Sauce World Secrets was next. Then we listened, you know, and we mm -hmm. we went on and on. We skipped the wall. We skipped the wall. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I don't know what to say. It's okay. I mean, it's not like I didn't skip it. We haven't skipped it permanently. You can't Listen avoid to the songs from the wall. Um, they're on you the can. radio all the time. No, yeah. They're on the radio all the time. Yeah. So to, this is a really circuitous way of, of getting to this album. There, there is a point. When we were doing this in chronological order, we listened to the final cut. And I didn't like it. What's wrong with you? Yeah. Didn't like it. So then when we put this on, the next thing that we listened to, you know, I just really enjoyed this album. I mean, there's something familiar about it, like I said. Yeah, it sounds like Pink Floyd. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I, I have to say it was kind of a breath of fresh air after the final cut. I've continued to enjoy this. <laughs> oh, music again. Now, I mean, you know, it being polarizing, I mean, it's not a perfect album. I can, I can, I can be objective about, you know, its flaws, but... Some of the things that I've seen people critique it f for are themselves rather subjective. Absolutely. The one that I'm talking about is that it sounds very 80s. Right, and I hate that. I hate that call out. And it's kind of interesting. We've talked about that with other things. It's kind of interesting. It, it, it almost reminds me a little bit of 
like kids nowadays, I don't know about kids, they're probably like in their 20s, kids. that can't watch black and white movies. Ugh. You know? The nerve. I thought that, I always thought that was so weird. Like well, that is weird. It is, but you can't watch, it's like, it's, oh, but it's so dated. It's because it was made in 1935, I don't know what to tell you, you know? Yeah. Grow up. But, Grow um, up, kid. Watch a movie. Growing up, the 80s sound to me was just the sound. Because that's the the first music, you know, like the popular yeah. music I heard just had that sound. But then, of course, in the 90s, when we started getting older and listening to like our own music and you started listening to, you know, you started listening to the bands that were popular, you know, Soundgarden and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, whatnot. Soundgarden's not whatnot. That's not um, business. You know, the production was certainly fairly different. So I also dislike that 80 sound i you know for a long time i don't think i ever was bothered by it no you weren't you weren't i'm fine listening to things and understanding with my mind that they came from different times yes, you are way smarter than me and everyone else i had no problem with it at all mm. no problem at all 60s records sound like they're from the 60s 70s albums sound like they're from the 70s and you know not we can let our albums. '80s albums they, just sound you know, like they're from the '80s too. They they remixed this recently, and I don't mind that. I, I'm I'm glad they did that because it was done by the actual people and not right. just some random Which people. Which is okay. Yeah, so it's it's interesting. It was interesting to listen to that with sort of some of the production kind of brought back Brandon. and Nick Mason and Rick Wright put in more. But I still have to say I do prefer this. Yeah, the the original is absolutely fine and would be my preferred. This album has a nice, pillowy, kind of mm. comforting sound to me. Yeah. And I, I again, it's that is a, awfully subjective, but I, but I, it does. The way I it feel, has like feel a about warmth. It really. Like this album just like, just hugs me like mm. a blanket. I love this album, and it sounds really good on vinyl. Yes, you know, it because does. I'm I'm used to listening to it on CD. And the vinyl is is very nice. Mm-hmm. So obviously, I mean, one of the other criticisms of it's not it's not really Pink Floyd, it's not really a band album. I mean, I, you know, Nick Mason isn't on it as much as you know. It's a Dave Gilmore solo album. And uh, and Rick Wright isn't really on it, and of course Roger Waters isn't on it at all. And that is a fair that's a fair criticism. It definitely is. Um, yeah, Roger Waters was not on it at all. No. Side one, I enjoy. Yeah. I enjoy a lot. And uh, side two, well, I mean, Terminal Frost and Sorrow are just gorgeous, wonderful songs. Even those, I mean, on side, you know, Learning to Fly, One Slip. Those two songs are probably two of my most favorite of all Pink Floyd songs. Hmm. I and, just love them. And One Slip was co-written with Phil Manzanera, and anything, anything he has something to do with, I, I, I find interesting. I mean, you know, obviously. We haven't talked about Roxy Music in a while, but... We have talked about a good amount of that. huge albums. fans of Roxy Music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if it is a Dave Gilmore solo album, if people, if that's a criticism, I don't really understand that. That sounds like a good thing to me, but I, I don't know. Dave Gilmore is one of the most talented musicians of the last 50 years. Yeah. Not only is he an outrageous guitar player, but his voice... Yeah, his, his singing is I mean, he that fantastic. his voice, and I, I always basically thought Dave Gilmore's voice blended with Rick Wright's voice yeah. is the sound of Pink Floyd. I would agree with you. Yeah. That, that is, that's the voice. That's, that's what you hear. one of the top five two-part, you know, harmonies or Their harmony voices blended together are just, it's just such a wonderful, wonderful sound. Yeah. yeah. More Dave Gilmore is never a bad thing. That's what I say. I mean, we said before, I mean, Dave Gilmore's guitar as a, a incredible singer with such emotion, such such an ability to convey emotion, and his guitar playing is just an extension of that. He's such a, an incredibly expressive guitar Very player. Very vocal, and the style. two things are just interwoven. And then, if you have him and Rick Wright singing, they sound like one voice. Yes. And the guitar is a third part of that voice, and you know that's just mm-hmm. yeah, that's what I want to hear from no, Pink Floyd. It's too good. It's not actually on this record, but the two of them harmonizing. But I'm just I saying, uh, just as far as Dave Gilmore's credentials, yeah, and we're kind of t- we're sort of tiptoeing around ro- some of the things Roger Waters has said. I know. Well, you know, he's not the nicest guy sometimes. Oh, that's fair. That's from personal experience. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know from experience, dude. No, no, you no, don't. No, you don't. That's right. 
Um, I know. No, because I, you know, I've seen, I've heard him talk about it, and I've read things that he has said about uh, Pink Floyd. And the only thing I would say is, it seems kind of ironic that Roger Waters would sort would feel that Pink Floyd couldn't exist without him, when Pink Floyd is a band that weathered losing their sole composer, right. lead singer, guitar player, and visionary. Yeah. Yeah. It's like if they could, if they yeah, could if deal with Sid, Sid Barrett, Barrett. Yeah, if they could or... deal with Sid Barrett not being there when he created yeah. like that entire thing. It's also funny because I mean the the evidence is clear. Pink Floyd does exist after Roger Waters. Yes. It it did. So and you know, I, I I still think this album sounds very Pink Floydy. Yeah, it does. I, and I do. I tend to. It's think It's cool. So, it's cool if you're like a huge Roger Waters fan. Like we're not like dumping on anybody, but we're just no, we're just giving our opinions, okay? Well, no, it's not disparaging Roger Waters. I mean, to me, with Pink Floyd, you know, Roger Waters, the lyrics, the concepts, you know, but, and that's important. But there was always it's a proportion. You need you need to have. A, this amount of Roger Waters, this amount of Dave Gilmore, this right. amount of Rick Wright. Because in a lot of cases, Dave is bringing the melodies and the, you know, the music fun stuff. Is, is, I mean, they all, I mean, not to say Roger Waters didn't write the music. He's you pretty know, cute, too. Roger Waters. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's the Pink Floyd. So, like, Wish You Were Here, after Dark Side of the Moon, is my, it, uh, well, yeah, it's my favorite Pink Floyd you album. Like, you've always liked Wish You Were Here. Yeah, after Dark Side of the Moon and, and up until... Yeah. Well, I always I guess really liked is. those early middle ones, you no, know, I like do too. Clouds and Metal, Uma Guma. I do too. I Adam mean, Hartmother. But anyway, there are some there are some really good songs here. I I happen to really I mean I really do like One Slip. That's a great song. Yeah. I do like that. I like that song a lot. That was the first song that made it onto a playlist. You know, Terminal Frost it's is beautiful. It's a wonderful wonderful instrumental. I love that song. It's just like Gorgeous, gorgeous have, melody. So so luscious. I have no problem with listening to Dave Gilmore play guitar. Uh, you know, most people that's, don't. It's good enough for me. It's a real feel, like, and I don't know if it's a nostalgia thing, like this nostalgia that is evoked from this album. For me, it's like it puts me in a in a very specific place. Mm-hmm. Like I hear, I hear these songs, and. And it, it's like, it, I don't know, it just, it's just very specific. It's a very specific thing. And I enjoy that. Vague, I don't know if other people have that same experience. Vaguely put, it's a very specific thing. It is vaguely specific. Yeah. Also, uh, On the Turning Away. Mm-hmm. I love that song too. And that song reminds me of the melody of Wild Mountain Time. You know, that, that, that bird song. There's something of that, that very Celtic melody mm-hmm. there. Uh, that is really lovely. It, there's a lot on this album to enjoy. And, you know, the drums are the... I think the drums are the most 80s-sounding thing. Yeah. yeah this, uh, the horn that is not even the, there that much does not bother me. The reverb is warm. This is a it's very warm-sounding warm. album. So even though there's a lot of... There's no, like, harsh sounds. You know, there's nothing, no, like, really no, crispy. It, it's all soft. It, it still has that ambience yeah. that you kind of... You expect... Yeah. There are also a couple of songs that sound like Ween to me. You know, Ween <laughs> has like a tendency to, to sound like Pink Floyd every now and then, which I, I always thought was... Well, they're a very similar band. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think of this album in the comments. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to Stacey and Kingdoms, and we will see you next time.